So we've gone over limits and discontinuities and kind of defining them, saying what they are, blah, 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 how to use them a bit. But now we're going to get into the real kind of bread and butter about calculus and how, what you use limits for. And first we'll take a step back and talk about, kind of review what slope, I mean, you probably know what slope is, but we'll review kind of what it means, how it applies to nonlinear functions. And uh, let's just get right into it. So if you recall a function like y equals 2x, it goes right to the origin, up like that. It's got a slope of 2, hence the, that's the coefficient in front of the x. So for every 1 unit you go over with x, you're going up 2 with y, over 1, up 2, or rise over run would be 2, so rise over run is the slope. Maybe you wrote it as dy dx, or maybe you... I don't know, there's a lot of different, different change in y over change in x, etc., etc. And for this function, you have the same slope throughout. Here the slope is 2, here the slope is 2, here the slope is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 etc., etc. However, now let's look at our good old friend y equals x squared. We look at that, and you can see that for every change in y, so let's pick, I don't know, this point right over here. You have a change in y that's pretty steep for that change in x. Here, for that same change in x, we have less of a change in y. And over here, we have even a smaller change in y for a change in x. And right here, you'll see there's, I mean, you go, you go a tiny bit over an x, and there's, you can't even see what the change in y is. It's tiny, and it, of course, it's, it's an even function, so it's the same on both sides. But what you can tell is that the farther away you get from the origin the bigger and bigger your changes in y are. You know, kind of, you could just think of it like going up and up faster and faster as you get farther and farther away. So, um, what's a, a kind of, a good way to guesstimate a slope would be to look at that function and, let me change back to black. If you looked at that function at, maybe you were trying to guess what the slope is at 2, and let's say our function is x squared. Well, um, you're trying to figure out, really, you want to know what that, what that, if you were to draw a tangent line right here, and you may have, you may be familiar with tangent lines, but they're a line that just touches a function at one point. That was kind of a, I'll try and draw a better one. It just barely touches the function, even that. Just barely touches the function at that one point. That should be touching. Um, doesn't, a secant line is kind of, you know, if you had your function and it went through it twice, that's a secant line, but we'll, we'll talk about those in, later. So this tangent line would be the slope at that point. However, we don't know how to calculate that yet. So one way you could do it would be maybe you would figure out the y value at x equals 3. So up here, you could figure out the y value at x equals 2. You could subtract them to get your change in y. And you would, I mean, you have, I don't know if I said 3 earlier, but if you're trying to find the 2, it would be 3 and 1. I think I might have said 2 instead of 1, or whatever. So, and your change in x, that, I don't know what that is. Your change in x would be 2. So, what's, what's x squared at 3? Three? 3 squared is equal to... 9. 1 squared is equal to 1. So your change in y is equal to 9 minus 1, which equals 8. And your change in x is equal to 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So now if you do dy over dx, you do dy divided by dx, 9 over 1 over 3 minus 2, 8 over 2, it's equal to 4. So you might say, well, the slope here is approximately 4, because if we go you know, one unit to the right and one unit to the left, average it out, we would get a slope of 4. Another way to think about it would be maybe instead of doing 3 and 1, you could just do 3 and 2, or you could just do 1 and 2. Now, if, I mean, you might be kind of intuitive that if you did 3 and 2, so this point here and that point there, your slope is going to feel be a little bit too steeper than this tangent line because you're doing that, instead of that. And uh, opposite, if you were to do 1 and 2, it's going to be not quite as steep as the actual one. So maybe, you know, you do both of them and you average it out. But either way, 
a, you're coming up with imperfect answers. So how can we come up with an analytical way to figure out what that slope is? Well, we would use limits. So if you think about it, a limit is telling you the value of a function as it approaches a certain, a certain you know, x value. But maybe we can use limits to determine the slope of a function rather than the value of a function. So that's kind of the intro to what we're going to be doing. And what I'll do now is uh, kind of set it up. In the next video, we'll do some examples of it. But I can only do 10 minutes videos. So here, let's just do an example. So if I was to do my function y equals x squared, and um, I wanted to know what the slope is at x equals 2, so 1, 2, I want to know what that slope is exactly, I'm going to use what's called the limit definition of a derivative. And I'm just going to write it out here, and it's probably going to look a little scary, but we'll, we'll go through and explain what it is, and it, it really shouldn't be intimidating. So it's the limit as h, I'll explain what h is, goes to 0, of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, let's pretend that f of x, in this case, will do, uh, you know, we'll just do 2, because we're trying to solve it for 2. So let's back up, uh, erase that. Limit as f of 2 plus h, oh, shoot, 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. Well, here is f of 2. f of 2 is right there. That's f of 2, that value, which is 4, because 2 squared is 4. Now, 2 plus h is, you know, somewhere kind of close to f of 2. It's just 2 plus some, you know, h is just a dummy variable. We're just adding a tiny little insignificant amount. So it's right, you know, here, and we're, we're taking that value. And then we're dividing by h. Well, so what are we doing? This is our delta y right here. That's f of 2 plus h minus, sorry, that's supposed to be an h, minus f of 2. That would give us our delta y. And now our delta x is, this point is, member 2 plus h, and this point was 2. So 2 plus h minus, whoops, minus 2 is equal to h. So this h is our delta x. So we've got delta y over delta x. All this is is a con very convoluted way of saying the slope of that function. We have a y value minus a y value over the difference in the x values, dy, dx. And what the limit does is it says what is the slope as we move closer and closer and closer to the actual value. So we're marching in just ever so slightly along that function until that h is 0, and we're getting not, not a line between two points that are next to each other, but the, excuse me, the actual tangent line right at that point. So that's the limit definition, and I'll write it out in the general sense before we call it good. But it really shouldn't be that scary, As, and it might, it might still seem scary, but once we work out a couple examples, so f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That is the limit definition of the derivative, which sounds scary, but it's just, it's just the slope at a point, as opposed to averaging it out or finding kind of estimates for it. All it is, that is the same thing rough pretty much as dy over dx. And you've worked with that for classes and classes. So we will do some examples next, next lecture. Or lecture might be a strong word. Um, but anyway, see you guys next time.